night. Uh, I'm here on location and we are going to be working on the Luna Moth embroidery tonight. So thanks again for joining me. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So all right, thanks for joining me again. I am on location at my parents' house, but it is embroidery of the month uh today so we're gonna start um start the luna moth hey kathy thanks for being. and uh, again the freebie for this month is our uh little luna moth card and it's a blank card and comes with the uh, um the little uh the envelope there the uh what are those called the the brown paper bag type envelopes anyway so that is the freebie for this month Let's pop this guy open and get started for the night. We've had a whole pile of embroidery these past few weeks. And tomorrow, we'll, or not tomorrow, next week we'll be starting uh, the monkey embroidery. Craft paper, Amy, that's, that's what it is. Craft paper, I couldn't think of that. So a craft, craft paper envelope with the, with the card there. Okay, so here we go. We got our hoop, um, our hoop floss everything ready can set that aside a little ribbon to decorate the hoop later and our needle oh hey lisa thanks for joining happy to have you here again all right and, and uh here's our uh, uh luna moth printed on fabric here all ready to go our little instruction booklets and uh, our instruction page that's specific to this uh, this guy here. So all different stitches. We I do have a new one this month, uh, the fishbone stitch. I think I might actually start with that tonight because I've been kind of itching to do it. I think it's fun. Um, so anyway, there we are. Uh, I'm going to have this nearby so I can just keep like looking at it um, just to know what to do next. But all right, let's get this guy in the hoop and see what we can finish, uh, finish tonight on, on this. All right, so loosening that hoop. The inner hoop or the smaller hoop goes in the back. Typically, you can actually do it the opposite way. Some people stitch, um, stitch with uh, they like stitch as if this is the front um, with the big hoop um, with the fabric like on the lower side of it. But I like doing it on the upper side like so. Tighten it a bit. Just get it all stretched in there nicely. Okay, ready to go. So, all right, I'm going to start with, um, let's just start right away with that fishbone stitch. So that's our new stitch for this month. We haven't done that here. Uh, so this is a little fishbone. I actually drew the lines on for the fishbone just to help as a guide. Uh, you don't have to follow those if you don't want. Uh, sometimes if you see a fishbone stitch in a pattern, uh, typically it'll be more like, a shape and then you just fill it in and you can fill it in so the whole space is filled uh, but the way we're gonna do it is uh, just we're gonna follow the line so there may be like a little gap in between uh, but I think that just kind of adds to his little antenna look there so all right uh, first of all let's check okay use three strands of floss so that's what I'm gonna do here so let's uh well, let's start with the goldenrod color and I got a scissors nearby. I am going to trim my 24 inches or so. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I do, I don't go too long. I don't really go past that 24 inch mark too much. All right, so I'm gonna separate my threads into three strands. So I just like bop the top um, so you can see uh, all those strands separating. And I'm going to just, I, I bop the top so they separate and then I can like isolate one there. One kind of came out there. So I'm going to just isolate the one and uh, the rest is going to be in between my fingers like that. And I'm just going to pull. It's going to look like it's a bunched up like crazy, but you let go and it just relaxes. And then I have my, my first strand there and I run my hand through it uh, just to make it all straight again. And now I'm just going to do that two more times and it goes pretty quickly. Zoop. And one more. For the third, this is how I like splitting strands. I actually think that it it's like gets less twisty than if you try and pull like both sides of the strands. So here I got three strands on this side 
and then the three here. It starts with six, so it's it's sometimes called six strand embroidery floss or stranded embroidery floss. Um, but if you see it in a store, the uh, just by hitting the end, the, the strands should separate really easily. And again, the reason for that is because we want to choose how many strands to work with. That will control how thick our stitches are, like how fat they are. All right, I'm trying to grab my needle here. He's floating away on me. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to uh, thread this. I, I just kind of like pull it to my fingers. And I do this little pinch motion, and then the moment unpinch and see those strands, I'm gonna just stick the eye of the needle on the top. Strands kind of push through a little bit, and I just grab them, pull them the rest of the way through. And all right, let's get going on uh, the start here. So I, I, I like to weave in my stitches, and I don't have uh, any stitches to weave in right now. So I'm gonna start with my away knot. I know some of you, seen this uh, before. So let's just start with a little knot at the end. There we go. And I'm going to start with this antenna right here. So I'm actually going to start like a few inches away, like three, four inches away from the front. There's my little knot. And what we're doing is reserving a, a thread for later, basically. So all right, I'm going to come up. Here's the first stitch for the fishbone stitch. You're going to go um, down the center line so there is going you have to like sort of imagine a center line going down here and here again is the instructions so the first bit you go like straight down the center line a little bit so they all kind of cross in the middle here and it doesn't really matter how far you go down i'm going to go down about let's go like half an inch or quarter of an inch or so these are it's going to get covered up later so it doesn't really matter how far you go down but right like so and now I'm going to come up and again, uh, you, I'm going to follow these lines, but a lot of times a fishbone stitch will just have the shape and then you got to like uh, do these angles on your own. But I'm going to just come up on the left side uh, where that next line is and I'm actually going to follow that line and cross over my center line. So we're actually kind of making like an X. So I've crossed over my center line. And now I'm going to go to the right side for that next line. And I'm going to cross over the center line again, just over the center. So there we go. That's our first two stitches there. And now we're going to just keep doing that. We're going to go from the left side to the right side, and we're just going to keep crossing over this center. And it just makes this like really fun effect. So back on the left side, and again, I'm following these lines. I'm um, just kind of like using them to help with the angle down. There we are. And then the right side. So right side and then just cross over. Don't really worry where it crosses over because it's all going to get covered up. So there we go. We're starting to get that crisscross happening. All right, left side. Cross over the center and right side. Cross over the center line. And we're just gonna keep going back and forth. So soon I won't be able to see my center line anymore because I, I didn't uh, make that stitch like super long, but that's fine. We just have to keep crossing over the center, center um, point. But it almost looks like a braid. It actually looks like a fishbone braid. See, now I'm crossing over and I can kind of see the continuation of the line there. And we can just um, keep going back and forth across that center. I feel like this would be cute for like leaves and um or like little fish scales or just a whole bunch of different stuff uh, it's just a, a really fun way to fill in a shape um in a really interesting way where where you do you have this effect of like a line going down the center like where they uh where they all cross 
Um, so it's just really kind of nice. I like it. Versus like a satin stitch or something else. It's just kind of like another way to get a similar effect of filling a shape. So this is, I was really excited today to get working on, on the Luna Moth. Um, just this fishbone spit, stitch in particular, it's just so sweet. But it has been a fun weekend. I've been hanging out with family and get to hang out a lot with Chad Kitty and it's nice. There was a, like an air show in town and uh, so we got to see a, a ton of um airplanes like all in formation and stuff fly over today that was pretty neat all right and we got a little basketball hoop uh it's Jen's birthday so uh or coming up soon here so he got a little uh basketball hoop for my parents and uh holy cow we played just like horse and pig and that sort of thing and man I have not done that in ages and ages I'm gonna be so sore tomorrow you guys uh we barely did it and and uh, I know first of all I'm gonna be sunburned and um I think my whole side my whole uh, right side is gonna be sore tomorrow so that'll be fun <laughs> oh hey ginger Oh, I'm, I appreciate it. I'm glad you like the channel. Yeah, we'll be doing this uh, hand embroidery all week this week. And then next week we'll be starting, um, we'll be back doing the ABC stitch along. And we are on letter M, which is the monkey embroidery. Oh, Ginger, um, it is penguinandfish.com. Uh, if you, my link's in the bio. Uh, all my links, links there are, um, will lead you lead you to where you want to be but yeah so this is our embroidery of the month um and again this month it comes so it comes with everything you need it has like all the floss and the hoop and uh, pre-printed fabric instructions um it does not have a scissors oops did i go on the wrong side no i don't know maybe i did whatever i think the effect will still be there um but yeah so this is our we have a new embroidery every month and this is our, our new kit this month and then it has, it comes in like a PDF pattern and, and a fabric only pattern as well. You guys, I am playing some thread chicken here. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Ugh! I don't know if I'm going to make it. That's going to be a huge bummer. Um, I got like five more stitches. Okay, so these ones are kind of, we're kind of done with the, the fishbone stitch now. And then we're now we're just kind of like filling in the little extra bits here so I think that's gonna go like right in the middle maybe right there we'll get this side and two more stitches can I get it with this thread oh my gosh I think I think I pulled like the exact amount of floss I need oh my god love when that happens all right one more stitch I think we have it <laughs> All right, so let's let's uh, take a look at this quick, and then I'll weave in the end. But there is our first um, our first side here. So I just love this. So all those the crisscrossing, like going from one side and then doing the other side, we got that really nice uh, crossover in the middle, and uh, it just looks almost braided. I love that. All right, so let's um, I'm flipping it over now, and we're gonna just weave in the ends. It looks it's pretty on the back too where it crosses over, we have that little gap there. That's kind of fun. All right, so I'm just gonna weave back and forth three times. I'm just gonna kind of grab as much floss as I can. And uh, um, this is gonna hold the thread versus tying knots. So there we go. All right, um, needle, I don't have my needle minder today. It's, I'm gonna lose it. All right, let's snip that. And you can actually snip when you weave it in three times, you can actually snip it like really close to the threads too. So you don't have like all this stuff dangling out at all. All right, now you can see we have this long line here. That is the away knot that we made earlier. And its whole purpose is to reserve a little bit of thread so I can weave it in now because I didn't have any stitches at the beginning to weave 
weave it in. So I'm just gonna pull up and like snip that knot away. And I made it kind of short. Hopefully I can thread this. So let's thread, thread this. There we go. And I'll weave this in as well. And actually, um, I might start with an away knot again for the other antenna, just because otherwise, you know, usually I would weave in stitches I already have, but I'd have to jump over here and I don't think I want that big jump of thread at the top. So I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna weave in the ends. Or I'm gonna do, uh, sorry, an away knot again, like, like what I did um, with this. I know that it's enough, it's enough floss now since we have the same amount of floss with our second our second piece here. All right, it's looking super cute though so far. Again, I just love that that uh, crisscross. So again, this is the fishbone stitch. Uh, I will be doing it again over on this side. We actually have a whole pile of stitches in, in this piece. Um, so we have the fishbone stitch that we're doing here. Um, the running stitch that just looks like a dashed line. That's what will be all on the inside of the wings. Um, the chain stitch, that's the thick line we'll be doing around uh, the wings. Back stitch, uh, let's see. Oh, just this little kind of like bit around his head and we got some just single lines. Oh, the stars too. Satin stitch is the little shapes we're gonna fill in. So these little half moons there and this little half moon there. And French knots, uh, that'll be the eyes and these little like star ring. Uh, there's actually another stitch in here, a seed stitch. That's just a bunch of straight lines. Um, I didn't put that in here, but basically some straight lines. All right, let's uh, do the other, other um, fishbone stitch, the other antenna here. All right, so again, here is, uh, so this is my other half of my six strand embroidery floss. So I don't have to split it again. We're already at our three strands. So I, again, for the pinch method of threading, I just kind of pull the thread uh, down to my fingers where I can pinch it. And if it's all fuzzy, give it a snip, uh, snip the end so they're all even first, but I'm just trying to see if I can do it without. So, all right, I'm squishing it and I'm gonna slowly unpinch. And the moment I can see it right there, I'm gonna lay my needle over the top, the eye of the needle, and kind of squish it down in between my fingers. And hopefully you can see the thread pop off the other side. I'm just, I'm holding the needle against my finger pad there, and then I'm gonna just grab uh, the thread from the other side, and hopefully I can grab it and pull it on through. So in real time, I'll just do it looks like, like this. So pull it down, do a little pinch. Got a little fuzzy there, so. Hopefully I can still do this. Kind of push through and grab. Yep, there we are. Good enough. All right, I'm gonna tie a knot at this end because I am gonna do that away knot again where we reserve a little piece of thread. Oh, shoot. Uh, we reserve a little piece of thread to weave in later. Okay, there's my knot. Um, again, I think I gotta go like, what's three inches or so away. Okay, how about right there? My gosh, I think this one's a little bit bigger though. I wonder if we'll not have enough floss for this. Uh, that'll be sad. All right, so to start the uh, start the fishbone stitch, again, we're gonna start with a straight stitch right at the top. So I'm right at the point and I'm just gonna make a little stitch. I'm gonna make it a little less than last time, about like a quarter of an inch, just because I think I'm gonna be out of floss. It does have to like go past your first couple stitches though. So, all right. So there we are. Now I'm gonna hop back up on the left side, cross over, then the right side and cross over, then left, then right, left, right. And we're gonna just do that series again. Um, so again, typically in a pattern, you won't have all these lines drawn out for you. Uh, it'll just be like a, the shape and then you gotta kind of like draw your own center line. And um, then you have to kind of decide the angle that you want to stitch at. Like it, you can go like an angle like this, or it could be like really steep. Um, I have those all kind of drawn for you. So you don't have to think about all, all those things, but um, you do have those artistic decisions when, uh, when you don't have the lines already there for you. So that's kind of fun. So everyone's will look different um, in that case. Everyone's fishbone stitch when you have to make decisions like that. All right, so 
we're going to just keep crossing over, crossing over our center line, and we just got to remember to keep switching off sides. You don't want to do like two on one side and then one on the other or something uh, to get that nice fishbone crossover in the center, that nice like center line. Uh, you got to trade off one side then the other. So I'm not on Facebook tonight. We're just on YouTube and TikTok um, tomorrow. Um, I'll be back home and have like, we'll have Facebook again too. All right, that one's a little funny. I think we're fine. All right, I'm just gonna keep crisscrossing down the line here. And yeah, I'm very happy that we'll have our two little antennas done. That's my favorite part anyway. This is the new the new, uh, new, uh, new stitch that we're doing. Uh, I don't think we've done this stitch uh, live before or in any of our patterns, so it's a fresh stitch to play with and I was excited to work on it tonight. So again, just keeping on that crisscross. So you can see mine, there is a little separation between the stitches, just a little. You don't have to do that if you don't want. You could do it more like a satin stitch where um, you're right up against the next stitch. So it's more of like a filled in shape. You're still going to have that effect of it crossing over in the middle. You're going to still see that center line, which is kind of cool. Um, ooh, I think I went over that one too much. Um, yeah, that one was supposed to be a little bit higher. I think I combined a few stitches there. Oh, well. Let's get right there. And got a little, little far apart there, but we're okay. I'm going to leave it. But yeah, so mine are separated a little bit, and I think that's kind of fun. It It's, um... Maybe makes it look like a little bit more of like a fuzzy antenna versus versus just a, a leaf. So I'm hoping um I think this will we'll get this done this week. So I'm here for an hour every day um, from 8:30 Central Time uh, to 9:30 p.m. and uh, I have a hunch that we'll, uh, we try and get them so we can finish them in the week. So like a five hour design or so. So I, I'm hoping that we'll be able to do that with this one too. Although this one might go over a hair. And you guys, next week is um, August. So we're gonna, um, not next, well, yeah. Yeah, beginning of next week, right? So we'll have a new embroidery of the month coming out real, real soon here. We're kind of like a week late um, in our lives than usual. Usually we're doing this like the third week of the month, but we had the 4th of July and all that kind of pushed everything back, back a week. So we're good. So we don't have our free week. This is kind of when we normally have a free week for stuff. All right. I'm feeling like my thread's getting a little short. Let's see if we can get, um, get the rest of these stitches in there. I feel like I got those a little further apart. This side looks super nice. All right, can we do it? All right. Couple more. This is, I think, our last crossover, center crossover, and then we got a short here. And two little, oh wait, no, we got a, a third one here. Three little short ones here. One. Two and three. Okay. 
Awesome. So there we go, our second little antenna there. I kind of feel like I missed one, but I think I just stitched it a little low. <laughs> I think we're fine. All right, I'm gonna flip it around and we'll weave in the end. Again, so we had plenty on that one. That's great. Plenty thread to weave in. So back and forth three times. And let's snip. Then we can flip it back around. We'll snip off that uh, French knot, or that little, not French knot, our little knot at the end here. Ooh, that's hard with nails. <laughs> there we go. Oh, thanks, Kiara. All right, now uh, uh, we snip that, which kind of releases that little bit that we saved. And now we're gonna weave in that end as well. Could have left that a little bit long, but I longer this thread, but I got scared that I wasn't gonna have enough uh, to stitch with since we were so close on the last one. But I think I have enough to weave into. Two and three. All right, let's snip. All righty. There, that is a good little start on him. Ugh, I just think these are so cute. I definitely did a better job on this one than this one. This one's a little, a little scrawny, a little goofy, but I don't know, I like it still. All right, so that's that. What next? Okay, I'm kind of thinking. I mean, I kind of really want to do his body, but I, I think I should do the wings first. So a lot of times I like doing uh, um, whatever feels the furthest back uh, and then do that first. And then the things that are closer uh, will lay on top of it nicely. So for example, his belly feels like it would be closer to us, like in real life than the wings, like the wing would be like on his back and then we'd see his belly up front. Um, so I think I want to do the wing first and then we'll do his body body after. So why don't we start with our chain stitch? So we got our chain stitch right here, uh, and I'm gonna get my, my green out. So we're gonna use three strands of this as well. This guy, uh, chain stitch uses up a pile of floss, but I'm still gonna get like my 24 inches or so. There we go. And here's how we separate our thread again. Uh, I am going to just bop on the top there a little bit till they separate, till the, the strands separate a little bit. And I'm gonna just try and isolate one out of there. So not two, that won't work. So just, just one. And I'm gonna hold the rest of it in my uh, two fingers there. And we're just gonna pull. And it all just comes we, the, the it like relaxes after it gets all scrambled there. So let's do another one. We're doing three strands. So isolate the one, Zoop. that's two and uh, one more. There we are, Zoop. needs a sound effect. And there, so now we have three strands on this side and then we have these three strands that we separated here and we just kind of plop them back together. One, two, three, kind of just slide my hand through there. All right, we are ready. Okay, so you can snip them so they're a little bit more even. Bit easier to thread with a nice sharp, sharp uh, end like that. All right, and again, I'm gonna just like pull it so I can get it into that pinch position. Ooh, I'm gonna almost drop my needle on the floor. And I'm gonna slowly unpinch, and then the moment I can see that thread, I'm gonna get the eye of the needle, just push it over the top, push down. I'm, I'm still pushing against my finger, but you can see that the threads like out the other side. Oops, I think I touched it. Oh, we were still able to get it. So I was able to grab it and then, then pull. Thought I was gonna lose a thread there. Okay, so I think now, instead of doing that extra knot that we weave later, I have some stitches here uh, that I can weave into in, on the back. So I'm gonna weave into the backs of these stitches and then I'm gonna just jump down to my starting point, which is right here, like the, the, the um, starting point for that wing. And we'll just go around 
around this way. Oh, I'm so happy that, that the tricks are helpful. All right, so this is the one. I, I sometimes get confused when I flip it over. <laughs> okay, it's the, the right one here, but when we flip, it's on the left there. So I'm going to, oops, sorry, you guys. I bumped the tripod there. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go towards um, like my starting point, which is actually down here, but I wanna, like, I'm gonna leap over there. I'm gonna go down, pull those threads, and then I'm gonna go up again. I wanna do this three times. So one, two, and then back down for three. Just trying to grab as many threads along the way. So it's almost like a long knot, basically. And it's that third time that locks it in. So I won't be able to pull that out anymore. All right, let's flip it around. Okay, so here is the plan. I am going to do a chain stitch starting from uh, the bottom of this line here. So this point, and we're gonna go around this first piece. I do not think I'm gonna have enough thread to get around that whole way, but we will see. So here's, um, there's a few different ways to do a chain stitch. Uh, I'll just go with the, the basic way here, or the, I don't know, the way I learned, I suppose. So I'm gonna come up right at the start of my line. All right, so again, we're, we're doing this line here. So this is the start. Ooh, I might have to set this down to do, we'll see. Um, I'm gonna make the shape, we'll do this a few different ways, but right now I'm gonna make like the shape of a loop. Um, so you can see I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a loop like this, so I want my thread to go upwards and around in that same way. And then I'm gonna put my needle back in the exact same hole. <coughs> and then we're gonna come up right away, about a stitch length away. Excuse me. All right. Oh, you guys, I think I'm gonna <coughs> grab some water quick. Hold on. All right, man, I feel like I'm having like some weird allergies here. I was sneezing all day the first day I was visiting here. So I don't know you guys. All right, so I've come up in that loop a little bit and now I'm going to pull and it, we're gonna basically catch this loop. <coughs> oh, sorry. All right, so see how we have like this little teardrop shape there? That is exactly what we're going for. And we don't have to pull too tight. Like there, I just pulled. If you pull too tightly, then it just looks like uh, two little lines. We kind of want to avoid that. Um, so I'm going to undo that a little bit. You want to just leave it loose so you have like a little teardrop shape there. All right, and that's our first chain stitch. All right, next up, uh, I'm going to make that loop, that sort of arc again. We're going to go in that exact same hole. So we're in... We're inside our teardrop from last time in that exact same hole. I'm gonna go through just a little and then I'm gonna come up on the line. And again, I'm on the inside of my circle right there. And we're gonna pull. And then we have our little teardrop shape again. I just wanna keep it nice and loose. There we go, our second little chain stitch. So we are gonna keep on doing that same thing. Sometimes what I like to do is hold uh, with my thumb. I like holding this first part. And then we'll go in that exact same hole in, in the loop, we're in the loop. And then we're gonna come back up in our hole again, in our circle. And then when I get to this point, then I'll just let go with my thumb and drag it the rest of the way. And there we are, it's looking so cute. All right, hold it with my thumb again. Go in that exact same hole. I have that circle shape. All right, so we are just gonna keep going down this line until I run out of thread, basically. Uh, there is one thing you have to do when you run out of thread or when you get to the end of the the row of stitches, so um, I'll show you how to do that uh, for sure once we get that far. But in the meantime, I can just keep going around and around. 
I love this stitch though. I think it just looks uh, pretty. And it just reminds me of like crochet and knitting. There's so many uh, crafts that use like a little chain stitch. So I just, it just reminds me of all those other fun crafts. All right, another way you can do this is uh, you could actually go in and out in the same motion. So I'm gonna go in, uh, like right at the, the, you know, in the in my teardrop shape, just how I have been going in, in that same hole, but you can go out, like in and out in the same motion. So I'm in and out, I'm still like within my circle and it's the same exact thing. So we can try that in and out again in our circle. Oh, little Brittany, so I, I am working extra fast <laughs> just so I can make it through the week too. So um, don't worry if it's taking longer. So are you getting knots um, when you do the chain stitch? Oh no, I'm lagging a little bit. Okay, hopefully hopefully that clears up, Rowan. Um, so uh, are you getting knots uh, when you're doing this? Um, I might have a little trick for that. And I think it's just holding it here with your thumb. Like by holding it with your thumb, you're preventing your thread. Like when I go like this, it wants to pull this thread back in too. But if I hold it there, then it doesn't have, it can't do that. Oops, I gotta, I gotta come back up before I get too far. So if you don't come up in, your, in the middle of your loop, you can just like duck under there. Now I'm in my loop again. Uh, I'm using, uh, Jay Song, I'm using uh, about 24 inches of thread. And I've split it into three, two sets of three strands. So this is, this is three strands that I'm using uh, from the original like six strands. So here I'm going to go in and out, do that motion again. Oh no, you think, oh, you're not, not to the chain stitch, you're still on the fishbone. Oh, maybe, I think maybe I have my thread too long. Oh yes, so for sure. Oh, okay, yes, yes. So if you use, use like 18 to 24 inches, if you use a longer thread, and I always, when I, when I was starting with embroidery and just like until like actually pretty recently, I was using super long strands of thread because then I didn't have to like, get a new piece very often and, and all that right but having using a long piece of thread it does um it twists more and the more it gets twisty uh, the more knots you get oh I do have a trick though to get out certain knots so if I get one of those I'll, I'll um I'll show you I'll show you how to get rid of it um but yeah and it also when your threads um Oh, Jason, that's a good good tip. So, uh, when it gets too long, it also it you get a lot of repetitive stress. Like it's hard to pull the thread. Like you have to pull the thread out forever. Um, and also, that's another reason why a shorter thread is nice because you can stitch a little bit faster because it doesn't take so long to pull the thread through. So Jason says, um, yeah, try not to use too long of a thread. Try from uh, elbow to fingertip first. So that's that's a great that's a great um, length to start out with. That's about that 18 inches or so. When I get greedy, then I then I get to the 24 inches. Yep, exactly. And then the thread when you uh, when you are using a really long piece of thread, it it wears away a little bit faster because I'm every time you pull the thread through the fabric you're like putting friction on that fabric, right? So you're kind of like wearing away, or the thread, I mean, you're wearing away the thread every single time you pull it through. So you have, you have a really, really long piece of thread, you are putting wear on that thread just for the friction of going through the fabric. And uh, you, it, it makes a difference. Like you can really tell towards the end of your thread that it, that it, um, that it's wearing down. It, it might be feel like it's getting thinner, or it might um, it might uh, get more in knots some more. 
So another reason for slightly less thread. Oh, Keisha, that's interesting. Um, they say if you get a knot, take your needle, poke it, and the knot will ru and rub it in your fingers, and it will loosen the knot. So what I like doing is I, a lot of the times, um, the knots that happen with um, embroidery, at least when I'm doing it, are like these loopy knots, almost like the, so you have like a loop and then a knot and then your thread. What I find helps is put your needle in the loop and then pull on the threads individually. One thread when you pull will make the knot go right up to the, to the loop um, or right up to the needle. Um, and then the other knot will tighten it. You want the one that when you pull it, it go, makes the knot go right up to your needle that you've put in the, in the loop. And then once you get it right up to the needle, it just kind of pops out. All right, so I'm almost out of thread here and it's hard, it's hard to, um, it's hard to like go all the way down here and then come back up and get in my loop. Like right now I see I missed my loop, so I got to come up and kind of tuck in here. Uh, when I get, when I get like that, I find like this in and out method. It's called a sewing method where you go in and out in the same motion. I find that that makes it a little bit easier. And you can actually just like tuck the thread behind too and then pull through. There we go. So we can do that again. I'm definitely not going to make it around. I didn't think I would though. Chain stitches use up a pile of floss. There. Okay. Put the thread to the back of the needle. And pull through, and you know what? I think, and yeah, let's 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 try and force one more out of here. This is this is getting getting picky here. Like trying to get one more out of here, but let's do it. In and out. Okay, but I think that's that's all I can do with that. So when you finish, um, we need to actually tack down our last stitch. Uh, because if we don't tack it down, first of all, my thread's on the front, it can't be there. Uh, but if you don't tack down your stitch, it's going to like flop up like that. And we don't, we don't want that either. So I'm going to just like, let's get that in place again. And I'm going to put just the tiniest stitch on the other side of the loop. So just an itty bitty stitch. It's, it's, it's not in the same hole. It's a, on, you know, a few little fabric uh, threads away, but just on the outside of the loop. And... We're gonna pull that through and you can see we got like the teeniest little baby stitch there. So that's called like an anchor stitch and that's gonna hold down our loop. Then I can just go to the back and I'm gonna weave in my ends here like how I've been doing at the beginning. And we will get a new piece of floss and I'll show you how to uh, just start up where we left off and make it look like, um, like no one's gonna know that we ran out of thread too early. All right, so let's trim the excess there. All right, let's see what we got. All right, so there's the wing so far. It's looking cute. All right, so I wanna come up um, right here and I'm gonna finish finish this wing. And uh, so I have my other piece of thread. So this is the other half. I remember we, we separated the green into um, three strands. Uh, so we have two sets. It starts with six strands, so now we have two sets of three. This is the second half. So let's give this a little thread. Oh, thanks! Uh, this is our pattern um, from Penguin and Fish. So the link for this, for the kit, uh, we have it as a kit version, a fabric-only version, and a PDF pattern. Um, it's over in uh, my shop. It's penguinandfish.com, and I links are in the bio, and you can get actually a direct link to, to the kit here. All right, thread in again. All right, so I'm gonna weave in the backs of the stitches to start out. Again, I'm not starting with a knot. Ooh, uh, Acacia says, I'm a beater, so use weaving thread. Ooh, that's, or bead weaving thread. I, um, oh man, I used to do tons of bead stuff back in the 90s. <laughs> and oh man, I, I have all that stuff still. I would love to break that out and and give um like bead embroidery a try again or just like you know i used to make like friendship bracelets and that sort of thing all right so i'm weaving in three times oops i lost a little piece there but that's okay i think we'll be fine there yet yep it's holding 
All right, so to start back up on a chain stitch that that I, you know, have the little anchor stitch and everything, uh, all I'm going to do, you know, here's that anchor stitch. All I'm going to do is come up in the middle of, not the middle, but like within the loop, like so. Like just kind of how we were doing, um, like how we started the last time. So I'm going to make my little circle, my little ring. We're going to go back in the same spot. So inside with that loop. And then we're going to come out down the line again within our circle. And uh, there is our next stitch. And it's, it basically covers up that little anchor stitch that was there. And it just looks like a total continuation. So that's it. Then we can just keep going. I wonder if you could recommend a book with different stitches. Oh, Gretchen. Um, hi, that's a good question. I, there's a whole, um, there's this whole encyclopedia thing. I'll have to find it when I get home tomorrow. I'll, um, uh, there's a, a book of stitches. I think I, I actually contributed to it. Um, it's from years and years ago. I'll have to look at that. That has a bunch of stitches in, um, honestly, I think your best option right now is just like Google or Pinterest for, for stitches. There's like just so many good videos and stuff out for different stitches. Um, Trix is asking, does weaving in the ends together hold just as tightly as a knot would? I honestly think it holds better. You have to go three times and you, and try and grab as many threads as you can. You're basically kind of making like a long extended knot. Um, I think it works better than just a knot because sometimes like if you would put just a knot like in the washing machine, sometimes it gets tighter, but sometimes it loosens up. So I think um, weaving the ends in like this is actually um, a little bit stronger than just a single knot. I mean, it does take a teeny bit more thread and, and a teeny bit more time, but uh, it's a habit now and I just really like it. The main reason that I like it though is that it leaves my back super clean. Like I don't have, I mean, I have a little frayed ends there right now because they came out a little bit, but I, can, but I can snip those, but I don't have like a knot with all those little frayed bits at the end. I always catch my thread on that. Um, and uh, so I'll be stitching and then I'll have caught my thread on a, the back of, of my piece on one of those knots and then I turn it around. I'm like, God dang it. I got a big old big freaking loop there. So that completely got eliminated when I got rid of knots. So I do like that. Ooh, you make earrings uh, for adults and kids, medallions and lanyards. Oh my gosh. I have to, I'll have to check out um, your, your work. When we're done here. That's so fun. Oh, you've done that a lot yourself, catching catching your thread on one of those knots. That just drives me crazy. And actually what drives me more crazy is when I pull that little bit, those little teeny ends, like the end of a, a knot, the little fray ends, when I pull those to the front with my next stitch, and then I got those little frayed ends on the front. Oh my God, that drives me nuts. So that was, that was a big thing. And then I learned about this way of um, stitching without any knots and... Um, at first I'm like, oh, this is like, it uses up a lot of thread or it, it takes extra time, but holy cow, once it eliminated all that stupid knot stuff on the back, Ooh, I'm a little twisty. I'm going to let that dangle for a sec, but that was, um, I, I haven't really gone back to, back to that. Sometimes I feel like I get lazy and I just like, yeah, I'll just tie a knot here, but I'm always annoyed when I do that. Or right, I'm going to just try that in and out method here. Ooh, that one was a little twisty. Let's see if I can fluff it up there. All right, one thing to remember is um, I'm always going back in the same hole, which is within the circle. So I know I've, I've seen some people um, get tripped up because they're actually doing their next stitch. They're going in on the outside of the loop, but you always want to go back to the inside, like right, right at the top on the inside where your last um, where you came out of um, with your last stitch. All right, a few more. Yep, I think two more stitches and we'll have it. One. My 
hands at like a little awkward point. I do, you know, you can see I, I keep I keep holding it down with my thumb. And again, if you're if you're just coming in, the reason I'm doing that is because when I go back in the same hole and I and I pull the needle down, it wants to pull this thread back too. So that it wants to like pull that out. Um, so uh, I want to hold it so it doesn't have that area to move or that place to move. I go back here. Um, what time is it there? Oh, it is 9.20 here. I am in central time. So we are about done here. And I think I might uh, I might just finish this stitch here and we might call it a night. Um, I'm here every evening at 8.30 p.m. central time uh, to about 9.30, um, you know, give or take a little bit. Um, so I'll be back tomorrow uh, at, at 8.30 p.m. central time. So an hour before what it is now. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do that last little stitch. So we're we're tacking that down with our little anchor stitch. So I'm just going a teeny tiny stitch on the other side of my loop. And you can already see like my loops pop coming up. Uh, but if I pull, we will tack it down. So tiny, tiny little stitch to tack it down there. All right. So, I mean, I do have a little bit more thread. Maybe I'll just go. Oh, I got a few more minutes left. I'll go till I use up the rest of this floss. I think I'm just going to jump down here and uh, we'll start doing uh, the chain stitch here. And actually, why don't I show you a different way to do the chain stitch? So this is called a reverse chain stitch. So this is a, a just a plain chain stitch or like a forward chain stitch. This is a reverse chain stitch. And it's exactly what um, it sounds like. I'm gonna start in reverse. So I'm actually gonna start with the anchor stitch and then we'll do all these stitches backwards. And this is a great way. So if you are having a trouble uh, with all these loops with the chain stitch, I highly, 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 highly recommend trying this reverse chain stitch. So it, it starts out a little bit goofy, but um, after this first stitch, it'll make a lot more sense. So I'm gonna start, so right here is the beginning of my line for this. So right at the beginning of that line, I'm gonna make the anchor stitch, which was that itty bitty 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 stitch. There, we made a tiny stitch. All right, so you gotta start with that. So then the next part for a reverse chain stitch is come a stitch length away. There we go, like, I don't know, eighth inch or so. And now I'm going to stick the needle underneath I'm gonna stay on the top of the fabric, but I'm gonna go underneath. You can loosen it up a little bit again. Um, I'm gonna go under that uh, anchor stitch. Let's pull it tight again there. So the needle has not gone to the back. It is just right underneath that anchor stitch. And we're gonna pull through. All right, so we got like basically half of a chain stitch. And now I'm gonna go in that exact same hole that I started. And there is our first teardrop shape. Uh, so that is our first chain for the reverse chain stitch. So to do the next part, and all the other ones are the same now, I'm gonna come up a stitch length away. And instead of swooping underneath the chain stitch, we are gonna swoop under uh, our, our chain, or instead of the, swooping under the anchor stitch like how we started, we're gonna swoop under the chain stitch. So like I'm, I'm like just underneath that chain stitch. We're gonna come through and then go back down in that exact same hole again. So there is our second little loop. I highly, highly recommend you try um, this method um, if you've been struggling with the other method and just try it just to try because it uh, it is so nice. Like I don't have to try and get in the middle of the loop. I don't have to like throw my thread all over the place. I don't have to hold it down with my thumb. Um, it really is like awesome. But this is this is kind of like the more traditional way of doing it, but dang, it's just so nice to just be able to slide underneath that loop. Then you go back in the same hole. And then to end this, you don't have to do anything. Like to end the row, you just finish your stitch and you're good to go. You don't have to do that extra anchor stitch because we did that at the beginning. You only do that at the beginning with the reverse chain stitch, you know, so we can just stop wherever we want with the, with the reverse. So I'm gonna just go until we're out of thread and then tomorrow we will pick up where we left off um, on this little bottom wing here. 
I think next I probably want to like maybe fill in his body. We have um, we have the stitches here to do. So I think we'll do those next up tomorrow. Then maybe Wednesday we'll get in the little um, we'll get in the little uh, chain or the uh, filling in those shapes a little bit. Oh, sorry, am I cutting off a little bit on YouTube? I'm trying not to. I'll, I'll have to do some little videos on, on this stitch. All right. Ooh, and you guys, uh, I am having our live sale again. So anyone who watches live, um, I've been having a, like, a mystery gift bonus. So if you spend $20 in the shop, I will throw in a mystery gift for free. Um, for everyone who watches live here. So you don't need a special code or anything. I will just toss in a free mystery gift for you. All right, you guys, I'm almost out of floss, so we're going to just get, like, I don't know, maybe two more stitches. We'll see. One. Hope Maybe I can get three. We'll see. I, I love the reverse chain stitch. I always show how to do the traditional one because this is like, I don't know, the real way to do it, I suppose, or the old school way of doing it. But dang, this this reverse one. All right, I'm playing with fire now because my thread's super short, I think. All right, so this is going to be my last stitch and then we'll weave in the end. All right. There we go, and we don't have to do anything special to stop uh, the reverse chain stitch. I'm just going to flip it around and we'll weave in this end. It's a little hard to weave in the end when you're close to the edge of the hoop. Because it kind of gets in the way, so I'm just kind of looping around a little oop, a few times. Oh, I thought that's going to happen. I'm like, my thread is kind of on my needle a little goofy, and I always kind of pull it off, so... Ooh, so somewhere along the line I got twisted up. My threads are a different length now, so I'm gonna just snip them so they're the same length, and I'm gonna finish weaving in my end here. All right, let's thread that. Oh, I missed. There. Okay. So that was one. I do it three times. I am trying to grab different threads each time. Because again, we're making like a long knot. Ugh, you guys, I pulled it out again. Boo! All right, let's, let's try and thread that one more time. And I'm way far away. Normally my face would be right up in there. Okay, there we go. <laughs> one last time. Usually it's not so silly um weaving in the threads three times but there we go that kind of the third time always kind of locks it in place i feel like and we can snip those short so we still have a very nice looking back with with no knots to catch on or anything and uh there we are it's looking so cute i love how thick these chain stitches are too i think they're just really really sweet and our little fishbone stitches I think we have a really good start on this so far. So yeah, tomorrow I'd love to finish the entire outlines uh, of the wings, and it'd be fun to do like his little body. That would be cute. His little his body's this um, nice little fawn color. That'll be fun. Yay! All right, you guys. So thanks again for joining me. Uh, I will be back here tomorrow at 8:30 p.m. Central Time. We'll also be on Facebook again then as well. Uh, but I'll be here on YouTube and TikTok as well. So thank you guys again, and I will see you uh, tomorrow. Have a lovely, lovely uh, weekend. Or rest of your week, I mean.